a lot of people have been including timelines in these kinds of videos, and I thought that's probably a pretty good place to start. So, I first heard of Steven Crowder, I think in 2015, whenever he first had the Internet's favorite Mesopotamian ruler on, Sargon of Akkad. I thought the meeting between the two was very interesting because while I had followed Carl or Sargon for a long time uh, after Gamergate, I didn't really agree with him politically very much at the time. And hearing him talk to Steven Crowder was eye-opening because I saw a lot of the, the similarities between the two men and the perspectives they shared. And I really enjoyed that conversation and it got me very interested in Steven's stuff. So I went back and I looked at his back catalog and I, I found I agreed with a lot of it. But more than that, I found he was very funny. And I'm hardly the first person to say this, but I hadn't found a lot of appetite for entertainment in conservative political circles at the time. So I thought this was someone to stick with. So I went through the build up to Mug Club, the Never Daily Times, the the Mug Club signups, the build up to the Daily Show, all of it. And what I really liked about Stephen is he was not just interested in the culture broadly. He was interested in specific messages to people and what they said about where they fit into that culture. And the most important message, one that he shared with Carl, is that the foundation of the modern left wing, the progressives, if you will, is that they require a certain number of people to be helpless and pathetic in order for their ideology to work. Um, it's, it's foundational to their way of thought, the progressive way of thought, that there is an oppressor and an oppressed, and they are there to help the oppressed, always. That is where they get their legitimacy, where they get their purpose from. And if you are the oppressed, they're not really interested in you not being the oppressed anymore. He's, he's spoken about it more times than I can count. He said, you know, they want you to be miserable. They want you to be poor. And the counter message, the message Stephen always had was, you can invest in yourself. You can build yourself up. You can make your situation better. And it's worthwhile to do so. He was a living proof of that, and I like to see that. One of the things Stephen always talked about was how important it was to go down that road and how important the next generation of voices was going to be. And I agree with him there, but I did not originally think that I was going to be one of those voices. And you know what? I may never actually be one of those voices. It's very hard to break into any industry that is driven by ideas and thought these days. Well, it's always been that way, even in the past. There weren't many philosophers in Greece, even though that's what we remember them for. What actually pushed me down the road was the sign that maybe... Because many conservative voices have called for investment in culture, but very few people broadly were interested in an alternative to the mainstream culture. And you can't build a new culture until people are starting to get a little bit tired of their old one. And it, I've always wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to be a storyteller. That's something that I have always treasured a great deal. And I, I was working on my own blog where I wrote about writing because that's where most of us start um, and told my own stories for years, even before I discovered Steven Crowder. But I never really thought there was much market for that in the conservative space because I wasn't sure people were ready to look for alternatives. So I was just doing my own thing and biding my time and thinking, you know, maybe I could work out some kind of publishing thing or I could take off in the indie space. I was convinced that there was a place to speak out on culture more broadly by a guy who goes by Zach on the channel formerly known as Diversity in Comics. And 
it's interesting because there's a through line between the three people that really convinced me there was a way to do this and a need to do this. Um, because like Stephen and Carl, Zach understood the nature of the message of the progressive left. And he coined the perfect term for it. It was purse puppies. Um, he said, purse puppies are people that the progressives hold up as a shield and who they make empty promises to to keep them on a leash. And then they carry them around and say, look at me, I'm so good. Other people can't say things about me that are bad because I have this pet minority. And I, I love that term from the moment he first coined it because it's so apt. But what Zach showed me is that there was a, a place for an alternative culture that people were really starting to be hungry for because he grew this audience really fast. Um, he didn't have a special media background. Um, he wasn't writing the, the tailcoats of a controversy. Um, obviously, Carl has done a whole lot since Gamergate that proves he had you know, the grit and the determination to uh, make his name on his own, but he got a big boost from the Gamergate controversy. Zach did it the other way around. He made himself a reputation commenting on how bad culture was, and then that kicked off a controversy. Um, and that's what really convinced me that maybe there was some merit into fighting culture, the culture war on the idea level, rather than just making my own storytelling, which is still, I think, the most important thing for me and should be for anyone who really wants to fight the culture war. But I saw some value in also trying to be someone who talked more broadly about it. Um, that's why I started making these videos on the importance of, of the story circle and how we can save storytelling and restore it to its roots rather than it being um, a deeply corporate exercise. I've stuck with Steven Crowder pretty much from the time I discovered him until now. But when he put out his original Stop Big Con video, it upset me and I couldn't figure out why at first. I thought about it and then eventually after a couple of hours of mulling it over in the back of my mind, I decided, hey, this is just one of those big corporate things that, you know, probably never matter to me because, you know, I, I'm probably never going to get that kind of opportunity in the first place. So why think too hard about it? Um, Jeremy Boring's response video came out. I really, I watched it kind of in the background. I didn't hear anything that changed my mind on my original conclusion. And then Stephen put out his response to Jeremy, and he played the phone call, which a lot of people have already said that um, the phone call was probably an unethical move, recording someone like that when they aren't aware it's going on. And that's true. I, I, I don't really debate that. Um, and by the same token, I really don't think that um, there's a whole lot to say about the contract. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I have a lot of questions that I would have to sort out with a lawyer before I would even know how to re respond to such a contract. At the same time, I don't think I would get a contract like that until I was in a position um, to respond to it. So I, I don't see the Daily Wire going around trying to pick up people with a couple of thousand or even a couple of hundred subs on YouTube. So again, I didn't really think it was something worth thinking about. No, what bothered me about the phone call what bothered me about the phone call was the part where Steven said, don't worry about my contract. Do what I want for the little guy, the next guy that's coming up, the guy who doesn't have a lawyer. And that's, that's the place I'm at. I would like to be a voice in these conversations. I'm a little guy. I got like 160, 170 subs on YouTube. I want to make culture. That's me. And I realized in that moment, Steven Crowder thinks I'm pathetic. He thinks I'm perfect to be his purse puppy. He thinks 
I am the human shield that he can use in his argument with another multi-million dollar company. And that was why I was so pissed when I saw his first video. I was upset by the hypocrisy. And I felt a little bit betrayed. Because for all Steven Crowder says, you can do it on your own, you can build yourself up, you can bet on yourself, and it will pay dividends. Some part of him apparently thinks, but we can't do it without Steve. Or at least he thought that in the moment. So, where do we go from here? And by we, I guess I really just mean me. Um, there are going to be a lot of different viewpoints on a very complicated situation like this. I don't think most people will fixate on this one point like I did. But it really upset me because the thing... The biggest issue I have always had with progressivism is that it treats people like they're pathetic. And I now find I don't like it any better coming from a conservative. So for my part, I really did enjoy the time that I spent with Steven Crowder laughing at his jokes, being invited into his house and then into his studio. I thought he did a lot of good, and he probably still has a lot of good to do. But I don't think I'll ever be able to hear anything from him other than there are a lot of pathetic people out there that need Steven Crowder. And I'm sure that that was not his intention. But that is one of the outcomes of the message he's selling right now. And it is not something I can get on board with. So, unfortunately, I think this is where we're parting ways. Because I really do feel like he's taken at least the message I cared the most about and he stood it on its head. I don't know if there's anyone else out there who is looking at it like this. I certainly haven't seen anyone else talking about it. Uh, but if you are one of those people, just keep in mind that no person out there ever lives up to the ideals they espouse. The history of humanity is of villains pretty much all the way down, with one notable exception. And the ideals are worth striving for. I think it is still true that you can work on yourself, make something worthwhile, and find success. Probably not multi-million dollar success, but some level of success. And I think Steven Crowder still believes that. I just don't think he's ready to grapple with the somewhat arrogant and condescending way he has tried to argue on behalf of small creators right now. I think that's too bad. I think that's too bad, but... For my part, I guess I'll just have to remember sometimes people let you down and it doesn't mean their message was wrong, but you may not be able to count on them in the future. Not even for something as simple as a couple of laughs. So 
I guess that's everything I had to say except for thanks for all the laughs, Stephen. It was it was fun. I'll talk to you later.